This is Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze, composed by Jella Cello on Tell Craig Your Story Podcast. <laughs> Craig here, welcome to another edition of the podcast, Tell Craig Your Story. Today we'll be speaking to Jella Cello. Now she's an amazingly talented celloist coming from Serbia. Now she won several awards at the Faculty of Music in Belgrade. And growing up as a student, she was tainted as one of the best students of her generation. Now Jella was awarded the Golden Shield and the Golden Charter Award, which are given for dedication and creative contributions to culture by the cultural and educational community of the Republic of Serbia. Now these are some of the highest awards you can get in Serbia. Now in 2011, she released her first album, Clash. Her composition of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze, as of today, has seen 1.5 million downloads. Jella has a 60-piece orchestra called the Jella Cello Power Symphony Orchestra. And in 2015, she collaborated with 
front man of Journey, Arnold Panita. And they released Christmas Dreams, which was all Christmas carols redone. And on her last US tour, she was lucky enough to perform at the Red Carpet Oscar Party in Hollywood, hosted by James Cameron. At the start of the podcast, you heard Jella Cello's version of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. And at the end of the podcast, you will hear the song Ballad for Hero. But before we go, please go to our website. We are at Podbean. Tell Craig Your Story at podbean.com. We have a link tree there which tells you where Tell Craig Your Story podcast is streaming. We are on all the major streaming services. We also have a YouTube account. Make sure you're subscribing to get all the latest updates. And we have VK for our Russian listeners and WeChat for our Chinese listeners. At Tell Craig Your Story. All right, here we go. This is my chat with Jella on Tell Craig Your Story podcast. <laughs> Hi Jayla, how are you doing tonight? Hi, um, great, thanks. It's a nice uh, thing to be here in Shanghai. In yeah. yeah, is this not your first time here to Shanghai, right? Uh, it's my first time in Shanghai, but not in China. I've been before to Beijing, so uh, but I... Shanghai is totally different. Uh, the atmosphere is totally opposite. I saw you at the Great Wall of China in Beijing, yeah. a photo, yes? Yeah, I had to go. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when uh, I came to Beijing, I was like, okay, I'm here for how many? A few days. Mm. So what should I see in Beijing? Like the Great Wall of China. Of course, course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did exactly the same thing. Yeah. Straight to the Great Wall of China. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's immense. And uh, yeah. everybody, anyone on, on this planet who has a chance to come close, uh, everybody should see it. It's like Absolutely. really, really impressive. Historic, yeah. yeah. And you're here in Shanghai to play a few shows? Uh, well, I came uh, to check for a few opportunities regarding uh, playing uh, cello or teaching. And uh, mm. I have uh, different projects I'm working on in Serbia, Europe and USA. So... Uh, I came here to check on uh, opportunities and uh, I will play a bit for friends uh, just this evening. Yes. Yeah, a little showcase. Looking I forward to it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's uh, like um, nothing like uh, huge as I usually do. That's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, as in uh, Serbia, uh, I have my own symphony orchestra, 60 piece. It's J. Cello Power Symphony Orchestra and uh, I love to play with them because uh, when 60 people play together, uh, there is no electronics, no digital um, uh, technical stuff that can uh, uh, replace yeah. the power of sound of 60 people playing together. So sure. that's my favorite way of playing, but it's yes. not that um, like cost uh, effective yes. <laughs> you know, when you have to travel. It's yes. so expensive to travel with all of them. So here, this will be like a one-man uh, band. Yes. So, but yes. with the backing tracks and the music my orchestra played. And nice. Live people recorded it, actually. Nice. So, yeah. I play different kind of uh, concerts uh, and performances. Mm. I play alone. Like, uh, I will uh, do a showcase uh, here. I play with my forte. I am classically trained, so I have a, a classical uh, string forte. Your education is astonishing. It's amazing what you've done in your career. We'll go into that a little bit later. Yeah, uh, 60 piece. Uh, I struggled to get three or four people in my band mm -hmm. to get together, let alone 60 people. So yeah, I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, my friends who are like uh, guitar players and they have rock bands and they were like, oh my God, how do you uh, succeed to, uh, how did you succeed the, to gather 60 people in just one rehearsal? Like, mm. And not to, to do the whole project, play concerts and so on, because like we have four people and we cannot agree uh, about uh, the timing of our rehearsals. So yeah. yeah, I hear that a lot of time. But I believe that uh, like uh, me and those 60 people, they're my friends and my colleagues, the people yeah. I know for so many uh, years. And uh, we feel like we're on some kind of a mission. Yes. Like we have to spread the word like, uh, yeah. Music is uh, the language everybody understands. That's right. Everybody feels and instrumental music specifically. Yes. Uh, Beethoven once said, like, when the words stop, the music starts. Like, if there is no language that we can understand each other with music, we, of course. Uh, it's the universal language. Yeah. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And I noticed that you're here in Shanghai. Who is looking after your border collie dogs? 
Oh, it's uh, uh, thankfully <laughs> you notice them. <laughs> I miss them so much. I, I have to say. Yes. I'm so sad, and uh, I try to explain to myself, okay, I'm going so far from home, and like, okay, people, uh, some people have children. They travel without their children. They leave their children. I don't have a, a child yet, but I was like, I feel them like they're my children. Like, yes. It, it, I was so sad and so worried about them. But luckily, we have a friend, neighbor, oh, who yes. loves them like we do, and uh, they love him uh, too. So, yeah, they are they are amazing. We wanted uh, to take a dog. We wanted then we were thinking about border collie. Then we wanted a brown white one. Uh, then we found one, but she was a girl, and uh, Bob was uh, like, oh, <laughs> I would like uh, a, a guy. <laughs> 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 There was only yellow white one, which yes. is very rare for border collies. Yeah. Like in Serbia, you have only black white. We came there, they were bro their brother and sister, and we were like, okay, we will take them both mm. <laughs> so that they can play together. And it's so amazing. They're really, like they call them Einstein uh, in uh, yes. the dog world. Yeah, very smart. Very, very they're, smart. they're the sheepdogs. Yeah. So, like, especially from Australia, they're supposed to be on the farm rounding the sheep up. Yes. So, yeah. I just bought my uh, mum and sister a border collie last year uh -huh. when they were nice. five weeks old. And it, it just shows me, every time I look at pictures, it just shows me how long I haven't been back home. Oh, it's yeah. Now it's one year old. Yeah, and it's, how it grows. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they grow fast. Uh, Absolutely. Think, yeah, one year and a half, yeah, yeah. they grow fast. Then it stops, but they're, they're like adults. But I believe that their spirit and energy are like uh, never, uh, never ending <laughs> yes. that, en that kind of energy, but I love it really. Uh, mm. I feel them like uh, they're part of our lives. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Absol you don't have that feeling before you get a dog. <laughs> That's you right. It? Like you understand other people <laughs> what they were saying. Yeah, yeah. But don't they say like the the dogs are like the stepping stone to then when you have children? Is that, it's the next yeah, step to have children? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just uh, like, okay, how do people feel when they like? If I love my dog so much, then yeah. I can imagine how my mom and dad love me. <laughs> like, right. <that's, laughs> I, mean, I suppose they love me more. Like, yes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's huge love. Actually. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Who loves dogs, of course? Of course. Dogs, yeah. yeah. How can you not? So, I want to go back, like where you were from. You're from Serbia. Yeah. I had a group of Serbian teachers here and uh, it's so lovely and i've still got serbian friends they keep telling me to go come to serbia come to serbia i will one day i promise i promise them I'll, I'll, I'll get there one day but growing up there tell me what it was like were your mum and dad into music as well or were they performers no no one in my family really yes, yeah everybody loves music everybody right. is like um uh, talented musical a bit like uh, everybody can sing nice uh, mm. My dad was playing a guitar like um, for girls when he was young. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So we had one guitar at, uh, at our place, and uh, yeah, yes. I started very, very young. Uh, since I remember, like uh, I was uh, walking and talking, I, I was uh, singing and uh, playing his guitar. Yes. Uh, then we had one small accordion at our uh, home. Uh, then I started to like uh, play it. Uh, it was like. No music, but I did something which I thought was music yes. for my family. Right. And every night I had to sing to them something like the song I learned that day. It w w uh, it uh, wouldn't be a so children's song like uh, from kindergarten. It would be something like modern uh, pop rock or something that I was listening. And I was crazy about music from early age, mm. really. And then when I started to go to elementary school, um, my teacher there like uh, was... Um, uh, she told my parents, like, you should consider uh, taking her to musical school because I believe that she's talented. So they did. They listened. And um, when I came there, I they, they asked me, well, like, what would you like to play? Which instrument? And I was like, okay, piano. Everybody wants to yeah. play the piano. <laughs> then I said, like, a guitar because I already played my dad's guitar. Yes. And uh, there, unfortunately, that year uh, in Serbia, although it was like 97, 98, we were in a tough, uh, a difficult uh, historical uh, moments at that time. You cannot imagine that at that year, that time, 
like they were in uh, my hometown which mm. is uh, like 100 kilometers away from belgrade in the west right it's uh, not uh, so small but it's not so huge class of piano was full full, full, full. yeah right yeah, they, they said like we have no place for you on the piano like wow. for the guitar we was received like two guys two boys like uh, you can choose a uh, cello or accordion my mom said okay fine accordion would be fine <laughs> i was playing that one at the home yes and then my older sister was like okay my sister won't play the accordion right. my mom was like already fed up with the <laughs> school like it was like two weeks of uh, exams and uh, enter entrance exams and she was like okay uh, you will play cello and i said okay fine i will play uh, no problem so i at that time i just didn't think of cello like uh, any kind of instrument that I might like at all. Like I was, I was watching uh, actually Stefan Milenkovic, a violinist, famous Serbian violinist. Uh, he was a prodigy child, uh, really, really famous already at that time. Yes. Uh, worldwide known. So I was watching him and I was like, okay, he plays violin, that, that's good. Okay, I, I could play cello. Yeah, like he was my role model. Right. And uh, that's how I started. But the first moment I took it in my hands, I knew like, okay, that's it. And my teacher knew. So uh, it was some kind of like, shall we say, destiny. If it exists i yeah. don't know we, we believe in uh, what we want to believe but it might be like it was meant to be like yes that i played cello the, the, the path was weird so <laughs> I yeah it. oh i understand yeah. was there pressure from your family to actually have a, a proper job like i know with a lot of families it's like music's mm -hmm. not you got to get a real job actually my family was very very supportive during my uh, school days That's and great. Uh, still they are they like uh, gave me to play to like to go beside elementary school like okay to be busy um, not to be in the park uh, with other children losing time mm. and so on like you should do something with your life yes. and it was at that time like that kind of uh, thinking about it but when i started to go to competitions when uh, the i started to win awards i started to win competitions yes. then they got the impression that it might be my uh, like my life so when i was 14 i went to, to high school like in my city that high school is uh, in serbia one of the three top uh, high schools uh, like a general high school and uh, i started uh, also a music high school and then I just w I went to my one month parallel and I, I thought, OK, I won't give my maximum in a, this uh, regular high school. I won't give my maximum on cello. Then I decided to cut off that uh, regular high school. Right. Continued music and I came home like, OK, I decided I will do just cello. And they, they yeah. were like, oh. <gasps> It's very brave. Yeah, because they're all <laughs> eco economists, lawyers in the family, like oh, proper right, jobs. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> So they were a bit worried, but yeah. very, very supportive. That's At right. At age of 16, I had to go away from home to continue mm. my school in Belgrade mm. and further on. So they let me go. Uh, right. Like in Serbia, uh, that is not part of actually our culture. Like uh, we are all uh, really, really close to, to families. Like you, if you can study your college or like you go away from home at 24, 25, 30, it, it, that's that's a uh, culture. Yes. And uh, going away with 16, it was very brave of my parents. Yes. I realize that now. Yes. Actually. There was a moment when I finished my uh, bachelor studies, my master studies, and then mm. I uh, did my uh, po uh, post uh, degree, yes. like postgraduate degree. And I started PhD in music and they were like, okay now should you think about something regular right <laughs> and i was like come on i'm at phd studies now like yes. what would you like more because all competitions won i started to release cds i started to travel to work i really started to make money also from from my music and i love it and yes. uh, that's like my life and uh, i said like what can be better than this for yeah. me they were like okay but we're still a little bit worried like you know but they are still very supportive. So that's yeah, that's yeah. really cool. And uh, one of your professors here, Anna, Nada. Yes. Yeah. Nada Jovanovic. Tell me about her. What I've read is uh, she's a big influence in your yeah. music career. Yeah, she's. Uh, I. Uh, she was actually. She passed away oh. uh, last month. Apologies. Yeah, she was very ill for a long time. But uh, she's uh, like um, one of uh, the best uh, cello teachers in uh, Serbia. And uh, her students uh, are all um, 
abroad mm. and a very 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 successful cellist mm. musician so she's um, like uh, it was a blessing to have her at my early age so that uh, she can lead me so that she can teach me she was the influence that uh, like uh, told me okay would you like to be serious would like when i was like 10 years old <laughs> yes like would you like to uh, be like a cosmopolitan person because cosmopolitan or you will you will, you will just like to sit like with your friends and drink coffee and uh, like talk 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 nothing and like practice 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 she learned me mm. that uh, hard work is uh, pays off uh, yeah pays off and that's the most important thing so um well with any talent you have she taught me that also but uh, i proved that <laughs> yeah. yes thesis uh, tr throughout uh, the time that um, the talent can help you until you are 10 11 12 years old then the hard work takes off so By yourself. yeah takes uh, whole thing so yeah. yeah she was great influence not only on me but mm. uh, uh, many other cellists from serbia who are very very successful and famous throughout mm. the world very important for us like uh, when i say for us for cellists violinists and uh, uh, when we uh, learn uh, to play music it, it's individual um, lessons one-on-one yes. -on -one. So it's very, very important who is your teacher, who is yeah. your professor and how you uh, get along with him or her. And yeah. uh, it, I had, uh, I was yeah. lucky actually, yeah. Everything that I read online says that you were the top student everywhere you went or through your Nerd. schooling <laughs> or through university. Yeah. So it was bound to happen eventually and with hard work, someone was going to notice you eventually. So tell us about the music scene there in, in Serbia at that time what was the music scene like actually when um, at school we were talking like when I was uh, young uh, like uh, what kind of music you listen like between children uh, the talks and I was like mm, I, I will ask my sister like older sister because <laughs> uh, then I come home I ask her like uh, what kind of music we listen like I don't know we listen everything like uh, in our home but rock uh, music was maybe maybe the uh, highlight of my childhood so yeah. really yeah it's interesting and, um, in serbia and before in yugoslavia there were really 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 uh, good uh, rock uh, disco funk uh, bands and uh, that influence was uh, really uh, can be seen on also in uh, uk usa a lot of people are following uh, now like that Yugoslavian uh, rock, uh, pop, uh, funk still, scene. Yeah, yeah. Still. and they uh, in investigate because uh, it's interesting what actually happened in Yugoslavia in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s with yes. music. There were a lot of interesting stuff. So uh, rock music for me was maybe the, the highlight. But when I started to play cello, I started to listen to classical music more and more. Mm. I had to, uh, but everything actually there is also serbian uh, ethno music is really really beautiful yes uh, there is that like folk uh, turbo folk uh, some might uh, call it it's like for fun like daily daily fun for i don't know parties but uh, there is very beautiful uh, serbian ethno folk music mm. so uh, i like to listen everything i like serbian music Yes. You can really find uh, like uh, influence of all uh, worldwide uh, trends, uh, like I also in Serbian music. Yes. So yeah, there is there is a wide range. So my husband Bob actually was one of those people who influenced the Serbian music scene. Ah. Yeah, from 80s it came like through 90s, 2000s, and so on. And then now he's uh, some kind of legend, like what he actually made with his funk uh, music it's music. amazing yeah, yeah. So and it's coming back to like all these 80s and 70s music is sort of all of a sudden rearing its head again i love it i think it's awesome and speaking of rock music i went on your youtube 1.5 million downloads for your version of Jimi hendrix purple haze yeah that's so you've got you still get that rock influence um yeah. so that's amazing achievement, by the way. But I wanted to ask, when you're doing someone else's music, how do you go about performing it? Because, you know, for me, I want to, you know, honor it. Because it's, but I also want to play my style as well. So for you, how do you go about performing a, a song that 
especially Purple Hay is it's a very famous song from Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, yeah, it is. But uh, luckily, uh, it's um, actually very hard to take like Jimi Hendrix to to play uh, on guitar also yeah. on cello especially. <laughs> But I I was lucky to work with uh, my husband Bob and uh, my producer in Serbia, who is like uh, uh, he produced uh, over three hundred albums, like uh, produced in ex Yugoslavia. So and right. he's a cellist also. Oh, but that helps. Yeah, very experienced and one of the mm. best producers in the region of U- ex Yugoslavia. So yes. uh, I was lucky to work uh, with them. They encouraged me, like. Um, okay i said yeah i love hendrix but they said okay we will do it for cello and symphony orchestra and uh, i had belief like that it will be really good so yes. actually it was but it's not that easy to play like when you take yeah. hendrix like to play it's like okay it's huge responsibility yeah that's right yes yeah, it's uh, one of classics of course yeah. But I feel that we did a good job, actually. One of one point five million. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll agree. <laughs> yeah, it was a surprise for me also because yeah. that was the beginning, actually, of my like um, electric cello uh, part of career. Because at that time, until that moment, I was like only classically cellist, uh, classically mm. trained. Uh, I played only classical repertoire. Mm. So uh, that was really, really, really a surprise for me also. Mm. And uh, I can notice that um, actually that was a milestone for other my colleagues from the region of Yugoslavia, Serbia, Croatia, yeah. and so on. So uh, they were encouraged too to start mm. uh, their own story. And uh, my friends, like two cellos, Stepan Hauser and Luka Šulić, they uh, one year and a half later, started the, that thing with uh, Michael Jackson's ah, criminal thing. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so it encouraged, uh, I believe, wow. everybody, which is really, really, I'm really happy about it, that mm. uh, we encouraged people like, okay, you can play whatever you want on cello, but yeah. it has to be good. Like, you have to work on your arrangement, on uh, playing and everything. It has yeah. to be good. point is that uh, cello is, what we wanted to say uh, uh, is that cello is not classical instrument only. You mm. can play a variety of things. You can play whatever you want as long as you believe. And that's what my next question was, was how did you get the different sounds? I mean, it almost sounds like an actual guitar. Yeah, we were playing with the uh, electric cello gives uh, uh, those uh, kind of opportunities. When you come into studio, we played with uh, pedals, with processors, with uh, different choruses. Uh, we got that actually, uh, that uh, sound of like cello, electric guitar mix. Uh, yeah. That crazy sound, and uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I implemented one that solo I was playing was actually a combination of uh, my uh, improvisation and uh, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach suite. Yeah, right. So we wanted into Hendrix, we wanted also to put a little bit of classical touch. Of course. Yeah, so on yeah. the cellists, my recognize like it's got it. Yeah, it's right. Bach, it's solo cello. Yeah, so uh, it was really, really. Uh, important moment for me mm. actually because uh, that um, uh, specific cover version opened uh, uh, doors like for uh, other uh, projects and uh, things uh, that came later but it's still I, I can say like uh, one of uh, the favorite favorite cover versions that I've possibly done yeah until, until now and you also did the Beatles as well yeah Eleanor Rigby yeah, yeah. Eleanor, yeah. well uh, the Beatles like I, I cannot imagine the world of music to exist without the Beatles. So exactly, it's, yes, exactly. There has to be something from them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they are really, really. Uh, I I shall not say they left a mark, like, but they created oh. uh, like a huge, Pop huge, music. huge yeah. part of world music. So their influence also on worldwide music and yeah. to, to I speak English, like, and a lot of my friends and a lot of friends of friends. They, we all learned. English through the music. So, ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that's so that's true. why the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the mm. whole that UK scene, yeah. and as well as American, as well as your Australians yes. in the music, it, it was very important for the world to get in touch with the language, mm. with the English. So that's the second, like, important part of uh, the influence, like, which which all those people left uh, mm. for us, like not only in musical sense uh, when you think about music but like culturally uh, worldwide globally yeah, mm. so yeah the beatles had to be there yeah of course <laughs> and you speak about global and uh, world global 
I didn't see any pictures or any tours of Australia yet. Is there any plans to head down to Australia? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was uh, mainly concentrated on Europe and yes. USA. Like, there were, uh, like, <laughs> I don't like to say markets, but uh, actually That's true. it is. Yeah. yeah, this is industry like yeah. any other. So, uh, uh, Europe and USA were like my um, accent. I put accent on that. But um, now uh, with uh, Rene, uh, with uh, his son Rene Entertainment Group, uh, we will check like uh, possibilities for Asia and why not Australia. Yeah. Um, I already had one co- uh, contacts with people from Australia because yeah. um, at uh, Serbia, uh, I was um, at uh, last, last before uh, this legisl- legislature of uh, parliament, I was a member, I was invited as an artist. I saw that. Uh, Congratulations, yeah. that's an amazing Thanks. achievement. Thank you. Well, I, um, I'm i not like politically ambitious. I mm. don't have that kind of ambition. I'm an artist. So uh, yes. I got invitation to contribute uh, as much as uh, I could like to try. Mm. And I accepted that. But then I decided when uh, the mandate was over, I decided that it's like um, I, I want to pursue my musical career. I have to put accent on that uh, mm. and uh, this took uh, a lot of my energy like right. In politics right yes <laughs> so i decided that music is uh, like my life my profession that's who i am yes. uh, but um, i accepted the invitation to help um, uh, minister for diaspora uh, in serbia to be his advisor for culture activities. ambassador yeah so uh, i'm like uh, all the time in contact with serbian people all around the world it's amazing. Australia is also one. Of oh, the is well. there you go. There a lot of Serbians and people from yes. the Yugoslavia region. So um, I don't know if uh, I will come uh, through that kind of cooperation, but uh, I suppose that uh, Rene will bring me there. So, uh, I so. hope so. <laughs> Normally, what a lot of the big bands from Europe or, or the US, they'll, they'll start here in China and go Japan, China, and just yeah. work their way down. Yeah, uh, the Philippines, in this part of the world. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just <laughs> do the Australasia and then go down to Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. I can just see you at the Sydney Opera House wow. with your 60 piece, it'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, it'll oh. be amazing. Yeah, and if yeah. you do, yeah, you you are uh, count, count you're invited. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, well, we all that's hope. Good. I want to talk about now, uh your Christmas album that you brought out where uh, you collaborated with Arnel Panita. Yeah, yeah. Another rock yeah. legend and he's doing great for himself. So how did that all come about and uh, what was the experience collaborating? Well, uh, it was very, uh, let's say, like, interesting is, um, like, not uh, that uh, tough word <laughs> yeah. for, for that kind of uh, experience, a cooperation, like, working with Arnel is something like, wow, <laughs> yeah. So, Were you nervous when you... Uh, uh, well, actually, you probably met Arnel, so... Um, not yet. Not, <laughs> not yet, yet, yeah. He's so kind and yeah. warm and nice person that, like... Mm. When you come to talk with him, to work with him, it's so easy, yes. it's normal, and no stress, and no pressure, and it's like, wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the impression, like, uh, was uh, he said, like, okay, I never thought that I will sing Jingle Bells. And <laughs> I was like, okay, I never thought I will play Jingle Bells, but yeah. together uh, we did, and uh, it was really, really uh, special. Who came up with the idea? Well, actually, uh, Rene uh, met us. Uh, right. Uh, we started the uh, talks when I was in USA, uh, in Las Vegas, Los Angeles. Ren arranged for me to play at the Oscars in Los Angeles. So let's talk about that a little bit yeah, later. Little yeah. Bit later. <laughs> that time, uh, Ren also arranged to meet uh, with the Journey, with Arnell, and uh, like uh, just meeting them was like already <laughs> fantastic. Experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, then, like we talked about, Rene and I were uh, talking about a uh, new album, uh, which should I do? Mm. Then Bob and I came to the idea, like, okay, that might be Christmas, because nobody have done a Christmas album on cello for and symphony or yeah. like before. Yeah. And then the ideas just like came, uh, followed one another, and uh, we were like, okay, we will do a Christmas album, cello and symphony orchestra, but in house, uh, like house techno. 
manner yeah. uh, in those kinds of arrangements. Uh, Rene was like, okay, let's see. <laughs> but, uh, then when we fr made like first, second uh, one, uh, first, second, third tune, like it was really, it sounded really, really good. Uh, it's uh, a little bit maybe uh, like uh, avant-garde. Uh, mm. I believe that uh, that album will like be same uh, popular or maybe more with the time mm. it's really really modern like arrangements uh, which possibly people haven't heard before like it, it, their christmas carols yes so yes. it was like I, I shall not say experiment like mm -hmm. because we knew what we were doing yes. so yeah we weren't experimenting we just knew what we wanted to have and then like it was okay jingle bells then like Shall we do it with Arnell? Arnell was like, okay, when he heard what we did with other tunes, like, yeah, of course. So that that's the story. Yeah. Then yeah. we uh, recorded it. Uh, uh, we made the animated video. Yes. Yeah. So uh, because like it, we wanted it to be like um, acceptable for children also, mm. like for all generations. Like yeah. Christmas carols are and mm. the Christmas is for uh, like uh, uh, all generations from like one to 101 yeah and that animated video was really really a uh, nice thing uh, like uh, it was interesting process making it and yeah. uh, everybody enjoyed so that's i hope only the beginning we were talking about different things that we shall uh, do but of course Cernel is on tours with journey yeah yes schedules uh, yes. i started uh, different things uh, in the meantime yes i started uh, to write uh, my original music and i released it uh, like a few years before so yes. uh, we'll see yeah we opened that uh, like chapter the boy yeah yeah with that page but uh, i hope that we will continue, continue. like we had some uh, talks like what, what shall we do next but we will see that's great and you, you mentioned about going to LA for the Oscars yeah yeah tell us about the experience I see all your photos with James Cameron and yeah. all those big celebrities so yeah. tell us that experience yeah, it was it was really interesting for me like uh, I, I was traveling before that of course mm. but, uh, so was it a tour like uh, of the US yeah yeah I have been but mostly California at that time right and um, it was uh, being in LA like during the Oscars it's a really special feeling yeah like uh, uh, we went to Grammys it was a really nice experience to, to see that uh, like uh, it's uh, totally different when you watch it on TV like, yes uh, broadcast it but uh, when you're there when like pink is going uh, up and down on yeah wow the, uh, <laughs> and crazy stuff doing and singing in the same place. yeah yeah Wow, that's that's a really experience. Are you gonna add that into your repertoire of a uh, uh, show? Or? Uh, maybe, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I should think about it. Yeah. So it's a really great experience. But being in LA during the Oscars, it's really something special. Like yes. that uh, euphoria and uh, like uh, energy everywhere, and like it's really interesting. So um, totally new experience for me. It's a like. Okay, now uh, James Cameron or someone Halle Berry or Charlize Theron comes in like, oh hi, how, like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Like, have a, like have a seat. Like, fine. How are you? And that's and then wow. in next few minutes you ask yourself, okay, <laughs> okay, all <laughs> people around me, like, is this real? Like, yeah. Yes. So, but um, uh, I don't know. It uh, my feeling was okay. I came here to present my music. So when James Cameron came to me, like. Hi, uh, how are you? Where are you from? And I was like, we started to talk, and uh, uh, when we talked about our future collaboration, I was like, okay, this is happening. So just you're working, like, wow. yeah, yeah, just relax, it's fine. And it is actually when you meet those kind of people, like who are really, really huge in uh, what their professions and yeah. uh, one of the best. Um, they are usually the most modest and uh, nicest people you will meet so it's They're all human easy. beings yeah yeah so it's really easy and no pressure with uh, talking and working with them yes. L and that was a really beautiful experience for me so uh, i don't know that night was playing uh, neo was playing paris hilton was djing uh, oh. at some party <laughs> so it was yeah. like okay like these people are, are real yeah like they're like normal people working their jobs and uh, like mm. so it, it was really a great experience. I had Amazing. the chance to work with um, 
uh, animators who work from for James Cameron for wow. Avatar movies. Yeah, right. Yeah, we were going to California together to um, uh, talk to children from unprivileged uh, societies, like part of societies foundation that was um, like uh, that organized those uh, kinds of uh, talks with those children. Um, they are like uh, working uh, with them uh, to reduce uh, their involvement in criminal and to uh, get them from the streets uh, to get them like uh, to boost their business ideas if they have one or to inspire them to have some business ideas to start something of their own so that mm. they go off the streets which is like uh, to involve them in, right. uh, in business or m if they have any talents to discover that and to work on that so it was a very very beautiful experience mm. to work and to talk with those young people yeah. and uh, it was like james cameron was uh, at that time the spokesperson of the foundation so yeah the whole experience was mm. really really nice yeah, yeah. amazing how did you uh, sorry the sw switching topics how did you pick the the 60 people to be in the the Jello cello power symphony orchestra yeah well uh we made auditions mm. uh, like uh, when regular orchestras have like audition we uh, announced it and people do they have to have a degree or some sort of musical education yes of course yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well uh, we didn't ask for degrees but right. uh, we asked them to play for right us in uh, music like there is no cheating yes like, uh, yes it's enough th for you to hear like one tone someone mm -hmm. like the uh, that's it that's enough uh, for someone who knows yes that's enough. yeah you know you know we do what uh, what you have in front of you so um we made the audition and uh, there were a lot of lot of young people uh, like uh, who came yeah. but we we could only accept uh, 60 of them mm. because like you can accept 100 people but uh, it's uh, our arrangements for the music like uh, were not like that we want to have 20 first violins or 20 second violins with one specific number of musicians so uh, because of the production and arrangements of the music so on so yeah. that's why it's 60 people <laughs> but it's still uh, huge yeah so it's real like symphony orchestra the real one trying to get 60 people into a room for a practice and that's what another issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the other thing that i loved is when i go and see orchestras i try and get there like it's not really my style of music but i really respect it and I, I'll go to the opera house and I go there like an hour early mm -hmm. so I can see them warm up. Yeah. And not many people go there that early, mm -hmm. but just to see them yeah. warm up and then all be in tune, like yeah. 60, 70 piece orchestras, yeah. it's just mind blowing. Yeah. As just I told you at the beginning, incredible. there is no uh, digital uh, mixer or computer or. Uh, electronic uh, technical stuff that can change uh, the power of uh, 60 70 people playing together there is yeah. none such a thing nobody invented it yet that feeling like what you what you like uh, that feeling you get when you hear like uh, the beginning of symphony or any piece like when they go together it's uh, not uh, like you cannot replace it with yeah. anything yet so it's amazing yeah once it gets all together that that oh, yeah yeah I yeah so that's my favorite way of playing mm. of course but uh, sometimes you cannot travel with everybody yes. uh, sometimes you cannot even travel with your own instrument uh, because of airline uh, companies like they have uh, own regula different regulations which really complicates life of cellists yes <laughs> yes yeah so it's uh, sometimes it, ca it can get really stressful about your instruments like uh, you have to bring it with uh, you in the cabin mm. uh, some airlines accept it some not some oh, like yeah. tell you buy a ticket for cello then you buy then then say okay you have to buy another one for cello like two seats for cello and it it's on and it on can be <laughs> for only you but imagine yes. like with uh, many many people that's why i'm working on um, the idea of uh, uh, having um, continental like J. Lachell Power Symphony Orchestra, one mm. in USA, one in Asia, so that we can have it formed. And then when we do projects and tours, like only I come with right. a conductor or n without conductor, never mind, mm. but only I come and uh, we are ready to play. Like, right. so that's the idea. But mm. 
like uh, for now we have this one in Europe and uh, I have uh, for, for example ready ready thing in USA but I believe that uh, Asia is uh, actually uh, the maybe the huge 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 market like again market I don't like that mm -hmm. word but uh, in art especially like, yeah yeah but it's it's industry yeah I yes said. Uh, I believe that uh, here is um, here are possibilities like the sky is the limit yes yeah for for um, uh, any kind of art and talents and uh, yeah so I think if you can if you can make it in Asia I think you can make it yeah, Renna a said long way. Before, like yeah. the other day, like uh, before, it was like uh, in Frank Sinatra's song, like if you can make it in New York, if I can make it in New York, I can make it everywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> now it's like if you can make it here, in Shanghai, in Shanghai yeah. you can make it everywhere. Yeah. So That's yeah, right. that yeah, times change. So yeah, yeah this that might be true. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Tell us about your uh, album Clash. Yeah, well, it was that first uh, album I recorded. Uh, with uh, Hendrix, uh, Hendrix yes. is on it. Um, it was um, something new, totally new for me, yeah. as I was only classical cellist okay. before that. Mm. So um, it was really a nice experience for me because um, very important also because until that moment I was like really attached and like glued to having uh, scores in front of me when I play music, yes. as classical musicians do, and uh, that was the moment when I like. Okay, now I don't. I I have to play music without scores. Just play, and it was. It sounds like very easy, and like, why should that be a problem? But ask any <laughs> classical musician, not not that easy. Like to detach yourself from the scores immediately just to play music. So, uh, in that um, manner, it, like it was really important, and um, it brought me huge success actually. Like yeah, it uh, because of my uh, YouTube views and uh, uh, different uh, doors and uh, open for me discuss to discuss with uh, different kind of producers, managers from uh, Europe, USA, UK especially. So uh, uh, it was Did really you... important. Yeah, but it was only the beginning of the process. Like yeah, for me, I like it from this uh, uh, distance. Like when I go back. Mm. I can say that now that it was only uh, the beginning of a process yeah. because um, uh, all I always wanted to uh, play uh, my original music. Yes. And uh, if I did that at that time, it wouldn't be uh, accepted like uh, like uh, you are not still known to people. Mm. People know you just small circle of classical musicians, but not mm. wider audience. And I had to present myself like, OK, I'm Jayla. Mm. I play cello. I'm Jayla Cello. <laughs> I had to pass that process with that Clash album. Then I recorded Christmas Dreams. I released yes. it in USA and worldwide. It went with the Warner Music Group, and uh, I released it in Serbia. It's one of the biggest yeah. labels. Yeah, Warner Music Group. Uh, yeah. distributed it worldwide, so it's really huge thing for me. Mm. Yes. And um, then I uh, decided, like, okay, now I would like to play s music that. I sincerely like to play and I would like to present it to people that's my original music. Yes. So um I at that moment it was like ready to do that because people already are familiar with Jayla who is cellist and then uh, they just um, are fine with uh, Jayla playing something like mm. you know. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Uh and that was the right moment to yeah if I did that original music back in 2010 and 11 when I started with cover mu versions and electric cello. Yes. That wouldn't be the right moment. S so that's why I said it's the beginning of a process and it came like to me playing original music for cello and symphony orchestra, which I believe that was huge project. We were working on it over for over five years. Wow. Yeah. Right that's a long years. time. Yeah. Well, for why did it take yeah. so long? Well, it's it's the process. It's mm. um, we had to choose um, the themes. I had something ready. Bob had a lot of music ready, okay. like music themes. Then we had to arrange it. Then we had to decide what uh, size of orchestra we want. Mm. Then, like it was like one a tune by one. They are like uh, classical pieces. Like when you go to history, like you will find it. Okay, the Mozart was fast, <laughs> yeah. Haydn was fast, yes. but Beethoven was very slow with hi writing his symphonies. Like so, it depends. Like um, it's process. Beethoven was perfectionist. He wanted like he 
he would uh, throw away a piece and then start it all over again. So yes. that's the process, yeah. So that's why it took so long. Uh, we had to arrange it. Uh, we were changing uh, the arrangement, uh, like um, uh, going along, like in the process, okay, now this tune is not with uh, this, like we want to tell the story. We made the libretto, which follows that story. So that album's name is Searching for the Magic Cello or Searching for the Magic in Cello. Yes. Uh, and we made the libretto like um, it ca it be uh, begins with a tune, um, a dream, and uh, that dream um, um, is actually a dream of a young girl who is me, <laughs> basically, uh, and uh, she dreams about some bad guys, uh, bad uh, cosmical uh, robbers are stealing her like diamond dream cello cello from her dreams, and uh, that's how it the story begins and then like uh, their battles and so on mm. so uh, we uh, had a lot of ideas and uh, like libretto was a bit complicated so that's why it took us that time to arrange every yeah. tone was important every uh, instrument in, in the orchestra when right play what yeah it's really important that's why it was a long process and we recorded it with live symphony orchestra yeah it in london budapest and Belgrade. wow yeah, so 60 people were playing it in the studio and it was um, like a really, really huge project, but mm. I'm very happy how we uh, did yeah. it at the end. We released it in uh, Serbia and uh, Croatia. Croatia took it for European Union. Right. So, um, uh, and uh, now like we had the concert before COVID actually, that was lucky like uh, that we could promote it in the uh, biggest hall of uh, uh, South uh, Eastern uh, Europe, yes. in Belgrade, at Sava Center Hall. It's huge. So um, we played it live for people like, and it, it was magnificent. Then mm. Serbian uh, state television recorded it, and they're broad they are broadcasting it all the time on state television. We uh, we made a DVD, so from from that concert, Amazing. and it's. It's really, uh, it was a really huge project and a uh, long process, but uh, really worth it. Yeah. Yeah, really worth it because, like, it was my original idea what I want uh, to play, actually. But uh, I had to pass the process of, okay, playing the cover versions and Christmas music. Right. And yeah. Right. But, but it, it's, uh, it all is very, very important because yes. now my repertoire is very wide. Yes. And uh, I got the understanding of different musical genres, not like uh, just when you listen to them, but how you play them. Yes. It's totally different when you come into the music, like performer. But that makes you a better musician. Yeah, like, you, you learn all different a lot. styles. Yeah. Yeah. You learn a lot, so that's why it's all, all the whole process was very, very important. Yeah, to pass. And speaking of music. Do we have new music coming up in the future? Yeah, well, we are writing all the time. Why yes. do I say we? Because Bob and I are working everything together. And yes. uh, we have some ready music uh, uh, themes, but uh, we have to decide now like the concept we want, like right. uh, about the next album. And um, how shall we like uh, make it? Because uh, now I'm in the mood like that I might... Uh, do something like for solo cello mm. totally solo yes like without orchestra without only concept like to make it but that's i believe uh more difficult than playing with like arranging music or for solo right. orchestra <laughs> because it's all on you yes. like on uh, you on the arrangement on your playing on like every single detail so um that would be a huge bite yeah, yes but um uh, I don't know, we still didn't uh, decide. I'm still like into uh, working on this symphony orchestra thing because mm -hmm. we have ideas how to expand the, yes. the idea. There are some uh, invitations like because people liked our journey with uh, that forming of symphony orchestra. It's not usual that some individuals think about, okay, we will form symphony orchestra like uh, usually the, the, those are institutions who make it like uh, yeah. state televisions or uh, like philharmonies of uh, cities or yeah states uh, yes. make it but uh, like individuals it's not usual common thing to, to like okay we will form symphony orchestra <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, and people liked it so we have uh, some invitations to uh, uh, we already created uh, like um, idea but uh, 
uh, we got invitations to realize it with some TV stations. It's yeah, about like reality show uh, with symphony orchestra. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's an interesting I'm concept. Still into that uh, symphony orchestra uh, thing, uh, I'm still not ready to like go. Uh, I will work now solo cello album. I'm still into this symphony orchestra because there are some ideas how to expand the production and it can be really, really crazy. And it will be actually because like like Christmas album, as I said, we didn't uh, experiment. We exactly kn knew what we wanted to hear. So we got it. Yes. And um, it, it was good. We believed in it. Like, mm. And uh, we believe that uh, this kind of production, what we think about symphony orchestra, how should it look like? Yes. I don't want to talk details. <laughs> I know you have a lot of people listening, so yeah, they might steal the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, but um, once it's I released, know, yeah. then then we can talk about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so we will talk about those details. Yeah, when the project Next is time. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Awesome, ambassador, and you're doing politics as uh, like. Yeah, well, uh, uh, through politics, I really had the chance to meet. Um, a lot of different and uh, very important people globally mm. and to play for them also yeah and not only like to discuss uh, political matters but also to play mm. uh, because as i said like music and so. uh, talent and skill can be very very useful and very uh, like to make uh, more friendly uh, atmosphere with people i noticed uh, also through politics when i met uh, different ambassadors or ministers or like uh, huge states like Russia, USA, like mm. uh, China. When I met them, I noticed it's like uh, everybody is really, really, let's say, like uh, happy, but um, really appreciate uh, when they see you have talent, you have skill, you have, uh, you know, to do something different, like uh, from r regularly educated people, like who are politicians, diplomats, or yeah, PhDs or whatever, but yes. uh, like everybody uh, finds uh, what I do very interesting. Yeah. And having me like in politics like this, it's <laughs> like very, very interesting. So yeah, I tried to contribute as much mm. as I uh, could um, during like my work in parliament. I played mm. for a summit of um, 120 uh, foreign ministers and prime wow. ministers. Yeah, were in Belgrade. Mm regarding that anniversary of it was formed like 60 years ago right. the president of yugoslavia it formed it and uh, it was the anniversary so uh, my friend now and uh, he was at the time president of the parliament invi invited me like member of the parliament to be guest and to perform for them so it was really really beautiful to like play for all those people amazing yeah from different parts of the world i believe that yeah music is um, really important in uh, all kinds of cooperations, uh, whether it's politics, economy, or whatever it is between the people. Like yeah. uh, music might be uh, the the nicest thing, yeah, that can bond us, bring us yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Well, that's what I love about it. Like reading about you is all about trying to help Serbia, which is great, helping people and making people happy. That's I really like that. That's really. I like to think about life that way. Of course, mm. uh, yeah, we are aware that uh, things don't go always easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. life can be tough. They're different, yeah, COVID situations and... now, currently, globally. I like to look at life uh, from positive, smiley. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, I like to make it look that way for mm. me and for people around me. I don't know if we give ourselves to the um, tough uh, like moments giving in yeah give, it, it would be bad like mm, and i believe that my job actually as a musician as a talented one like i have talent uh and other people who have talent everybody is special in some way like yes. we have to use it to make this world better that's right better place so like yeah. michael jackson said like yeah make a better place for you and for me like that's yeah right. it's yeah. true yeah and we have to do it like very we true. start from ourselves so if we uh change little things daily in a positive way then like if everybody would do that like then it might be a really a better, better world. world yeah yeah and you, we just talk about that and it says here that you were awarded the golden shield and the golden charter yeah. awards giving you the dedication and creative contributions to the culture and education community of the public of serbia amazing yeah, thanks yeah that's one of the biggest uh, medals for yeah and I got it uh, really 
young actually i might be maybe the youngest person wow. to, to receive it yeah it's a great honor yeah and i'm really happy because uh, my country recognize uh, my work my talent and yes. they ask me to contribute as much as i can of course i have to take care of my career but musical career abroad and everything but uh, they people there really really appreciate uh, not only me but a lot of people stefan milenkovic is back now in serbia mm. yeah, which is very interesting uh, he lives there now with his family Great. he works there yeah Great. So, and he's traveling around the world playing country really recognizes uh, talents and uh, talented people in different kind of like not, not only music but mm. uh, uh, different in science also and um, it it's very like serbia is very very nice place to live i love it uh, actually the most as my base it's you should come you should come and see and we will show you around that group that i was mentioning earlier they said oh just buy a house there it's so cheap yeah <laughs> and actually I was like, it is that's why i said yeah. serbia is really one maybe of uh, the nicest places uh, to live in regarding europe and that part of the world like it's life is very very cheap mm. when you think about like from australia or usa or from china like living there it's cheaper like mm. than in other parts of the world and yeah. the life is easy the country is beautiful yeah so you must come it's on my list of places to go to yes yeah. Put it first. <laughs> yes what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given uh, like uh, work 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 believe in yourself yeah mm. that, that would be maybe like uh, usual things like but they are really true mm. like if you don't believe like who will <laughs> yes social medias where can we find you Jayla? yeah well I have um, Instagram uh, Facebook uh, I'm not that much into TikTok. I see that it's popular <laughs> in Serbia it's crazy popular but I don't like the content like right. like now there are debates there in Serbia like about TikTok and what's what's going on there um, there were some situations you, you can find some of it in media but uh, uh, it's like uh, people think that uh, with Serbia uh, content like wh what's content in Serbia on TikTok like mm. it's a bad influence on children and young people so uh, I don't have TikTok yeah uh, but Instagram oh. Facebook yes. uh, yeah like old school <laughs> Jay yeah let's yeah. say it's old school yes. right now yeah Jay Lachello yeah and uh, just, just some quick questions and you give me your top two or three favorite of that question. Mm -hmm. All right, ready? Yeah. Who are your top two or three favorite musicians of all time as of today? Uh, Prince. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Chopin, like classical music. Come on. Lang Lang. Mm. Yeah, not that we are in China now, but <laughs> right. yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. 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 Oh, the pianoist, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Your top two or three favorite destinations that you've been to and then three that you want to go to in the future? Uh, Serbia is, of course, my top one, always. Uh, then, like, it might be cliche, but Los Angeles, I don't know. I love it. I don't know. Yeah? <laughs> it's just like that. Yeah? And then, like, uh, Shanghai, probably. Because, why? Because um, I've been traveling a lot and... Uh, you cannot feel this pulse and vibration nowhere else in the world like in Asia hmm. at the moment. So I felt it in Beijing, but Shanghai is completely upgrade of that energy. So uh, yeah, th this might be uh, the maybe the most most like interesting and energized place <laughs> I've been yeah yet. Oh, and yeah. of course, I don't know. I would like to go like Tibet. It's yeah one. I don't know why. I've the corner. Been, yeah, well, <laughs> I've been watching documentaries and everything, but I don't know. Uh, it's maybe Africa. Mm. Africa. I haven't been to Africa yet. Your top two or three favorite books? It must be like my hus my husband wrote a novel. Yeah, so <laughs> rocking. <laughs> Let's uh, translate it simply. Yeah, it's his autobiography, so it's very very crazy and interesting. It's about his life. So. Nice. Um, that w that should be the first, of course. I like uh, Paolo Coelho, all of his. And um, I was crazy as a child and today also about the books of Agatha Christie. Like, mm, yes. I don't know why. Murder in Oriental Express yeah. and so on. I, I used to Crime. read like through, through the summer vacation, like uh, the whole bunch of her books. Yeah, I like mm. to just sit and read. So, uh, yeah, and the movies, of course, Hercule Poirot uh, with nice. uh, Agatha Christie's, yeah. Very nice. Stories, yeah. Who's your greatest inspiration slash hero and why? 
now it can be weird but uh, you you met but your listeners uh, haven't uh, my husband bob like his story life story is crazy interesting and it's like a movie so uh, <laughs> yeah he's been he's been uh, like hanging out with like his friends uh, are uh, sean connery and uh, was actually but uh, donald trump and uh, uh, today is the king of saudi arabia those yeah so and he's still like a uh, normal person regular a uh, person who likes uh, cool. good music creates good music um doing normal uh business like nor living normal life doing business and uh, like normal people living but th his experiences uh, with um, business with art with music with all of these people he had a chance to meet it's like yeah something i i never met uh, yet yeah so so when's the movie coming out then <laughs> yeah well we have to see like there were invitations from some producers but oh yeah really yeah they wow. were but like he was not happy with the screenplay <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, okay. like who will who will act me he's well, gonna be the actor right yeah casting <laughs> is, a, is an issue uh, <laughs> yeah, <be> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you very much Jayla. Thanks. amazing talent really like what you're doing for serbia and thank your country you and uh all the best for the future Thank and uh you. if you come to australia or you come back to shanghai definitely i'll be there to watch you thanks so thanks. all the best i'm looking forward to coming to australia and i'm looking forward to taking you to serbia so come on prepare yourself yeah. all right <laughs> all right thanks Thank Jayla. You.
Hi, I'm Nigel the Shanghai Psychic. I can tune into your loved ones in the spirit world, but I can also tune into you, tell you about your path and the choices that you need to make and need to know. I'm currently giving 30% discount on all Tell Craig Your Story listeners. Just use the code Tell Craig Your Story for 30% off your first psychic reading with me online at Nigel the Shanghai Psychic.